All right, everybody, welcome to another Manic Monday. And this Manic Monday takes us to Payoff Pitch Baseball, game between the Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox from 1986. This game was played on June 21st, 1986. Just picked a random game to play. Uh, like I said, Manic Monday, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just kind of whatever is there is there. So we are at Fenway Park in Boston, and this is, I've got the PDF version of the 1986 payoff pitch set. Um, so we are at Fenway Park. And let's take a look here at the starting lineups for both teams, actually for first for the Orioles. Then we'll get to the Red Sox lineup in the bottom of the first. As you can see my score sheet right there. Here's the way Baltimore stacks up offensively. Tom O'Malley, who had a big night last night at third base. Juan Beniquez in center field and Jim Dwyer around and right. Eddie Murray in the cleanup spot at first. You have Cal Ripken at shortstop with a 16-game hitting streak and Larry Sheets the DH. Mike Young in left field, Juan Bonilla at second base for Alan Wiggins, and Rick Dempsey behind the plate. And, of course, the major paragraph of the unwritten story on the mound, and that would be Roger Clemens. All right, so Roger Clemens gets the call, and we'll be right back with first pitch. Okay, we are underway here at Fenway Park on this Saturday afternoon. The replay date is June 21st, 1986. And the first man up will be Tom O'Malley, the third baseman for the Orioles against Roger Clemens. And we are underway. I'm doing everything with cards and, I'm sorry, with the uh, dice and the charts. I'm not using the fast action cards, so I'll be using the charts for all runner advancement and steals and bunts and everything else that there is. So here we go, Roger Clemens, and let's see, Clemens does not have any adjustment on his card, so everything is straight on that. First roll is a two, which is patient, and that's 95 though, so O'Malley patient 95 only goes to 70. That will be a fly out to right field, and there's one away as O'Malley flies to right. That'll bring up the second hitter in the lineup, Juan Beniquez. Clemens, you got all those toughs you got on Clemens' card. We got a six, which is patient again. 79, though, is too high. Oh, no, it's not. He actually hits Juan Beniquez. That's the last number in his hit by pitch chance. So Beniquez gets plunked as Clemens pitched one too far inside. And there's Juan Beniquez. Doesn't look like him, but there he is. That's him. He's there. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Jim Dwyer. One notable uh, absence from the Red Sox lineup in this game, and I'll go to the lineups at the end of the inning, is that uh, Wade Boggs is on the injured list, so he will not be in this game. Clemens to Dwyer. That's a 12. That's tough. 90. Tough 90 for Dwyer is a ground ball to second. That's a 12. So when it's a 12, that means the runner's going to advance automatically. It's a 4-3 ground out with Beniquez taking second base but now there's two uh, two away and it's up to eddie murray to get the job done if the orioles wish to score here in the top of the first clemens trying to bear down hit one of those tough results obviously that's an eight when he does hit the tough result that's a 12 and he struck him out so that's going to do it nothing for the orioles no runs no hits no errors and a man left we go to the bottom of the first it is baltimore nothing and the Red Sox coming to bat. Here are the Sox with Marty Barrett and Ed Romero, followed by Bill Buckner and Jim Rice in left. Don Bale of the DH, Dwight Evans in right. Tony Armas has come alive again back in center field. Rich Gedman behind the plate. Ray Quinones at short. And on the mound, Ken Dixon. All right, so there are your lineups for the Red Sox. Starting pitcher, Ken Dixon. And I also wrote in the bench players for both teams, bullpens and whatnot, so you know who's available in this game. 
Orioles only have four relievers. They have one lefty in Brad Havens. They have two righties in Snell and Bordy, and then a third righty is their closer, Don Ossie. Uh, on their bench, they have two right-handed hitters, Lee Lacey and Kelly Paris, and three switch hitters, Alan Wiggins, John T-Bone Shelby, and Al Pardo. And for the Red Sox, in their bullpen, they have two lefties, Tim Lawler and Joe Sambito. Oops, can't see it, can we? Let's bring it over this way. We got Tim Lawler and Joe Sambito, three righties, Steve Crawford, Bob Stanley, and Mike Trujillo. On their bench, they have two lefties, Steve Lyons and Mike Stenhouse, and two right-handers, Dave Stapleton and Mark Sullivan. So that's everybody that is available. And I'm keeping the score off to the side. So we keep the outs here, the base runners with the little figures, and then the line score right here. So I can keep the clipboard off to the side and kind of keep everything hopefully a little bit neater. We shall see. I'm just the first time I'm trying this setup at all, but Manic Money is a good time to try stuff like this, so why not? And of course, you got the glare coming in from the sun. Simulate a Saturday afternoon day game. Hopefully, it's not too terribly bad on the video. It's kind of hard to see through my phone exactly how it's looking, but we're going to try it. Like I said, it's Manic Monday, so anything, it's all, all fair game on Manic Monday, the way I see it. All right. So I'm, I'm actually recording this on a Saturday afternoon as well. So. It will upload and post in a mere two days. All right, so Marty Barrett's going to lead things off against Ken Dixon. And we get a six, which is tough, 49. Tough 49 against a righty out of range. And that will be a ground ball to third, O'Malley to Murray. One down, and that will bring up Ed Romero again. He's taking the place of Boggs, who was on the injured list, or back then they call it disabled list. Romero, the right-hander, only hit 191 against righties. Dixon, 9, is patient, 39. Patient, 39. Ed Romero is going to get himself a base hit. So how about that? Ed Romero gets the base hit. He's aboard. One down, one on for Billy Buckner. Buckner, much better against right-handers, 290, whereas he had 218 against left-handers. Dixon. That's an 8, which is tough. 34. He does not throw the wild pitch. You have to be a 30 or 31 for a wild pitch. So tough 34. Out of Buckner's range, 34 is going to be a ground ball right back to Dixon. Possible double play. His double play is an 8. Dixon is a 6. The roll here was an 8, so it does not go less than both of these. But the 8 is more then the run rating of Romero. I'm sorry, no, it's not. Romero's a 10, so Romero is actually going to beat that and get the they go to second base because his run rating is a 10, which is more than the 8 that's there. So Romero takes second base, and that'll be just a 1 to 3 ground out where Dixon's only play was to second was to first base. And that'll bring up the left fielder Jim Rice. Can't really pitch around Rice because Don Baylor is on deck, so Dixon's got to settle in. Five is in play. That's a 23. That's dangerous. In play 23 is a base hit for Jim Rice. And with two outs and the base runner on second having a six running rating or better, which Romero has a 10, he will score automatically. You don't have to do any kind of a check. It's an RBI single, and the Red Sox lead it one to nothing. Bottom of the first, they lead it one to nothing. And that'll be Don Baylor's coming to the plate. Dixon. 8 is tough, 74, and that's going to be out of range. That's a fly to center, and that's going to end the inning. But the Red Sox get a run, and we go to the top of the second. one nothing favor of the Sox. And Cal Ripken, Jr., will lead things off for the Orioles, followed by Larry Sheets and left fielder Mike Young. Clemens, looking, still looking for that tough result on his card. And he didn't get it. He got a patient result. 36 patient for Ripken, and he will draw a leadoff walk. So Cal Ripken is aboard. Cal Ripken is on. And that will bring up the designated hitter, Larry Sheets. And again, this is one where on the inside pitch game, you could play Larry Sheets against a lefty with no repercussions whatsoever. He would do just as well as he does against a righty. But here in payoff pitch, 
He hits 282 versus a, a right-hander with a 503 slugging percentage, but only a buck 54 against lefties with a 308 uh, percentage. So there's you know difference in the between the inside pitch and the payoff pitch game. Of course, the difference in the inside pitch to payoff pitch for the pitchers is payoff pitch. Their cards are generic lefty and righty, whereas on inside pitch, this card would be split with lefties and righties. So take the good with the bad on both of those. They both got good qualities. They both have things that I think they could improve on. But that's just the nature of the beast. All right, so Ripken is at first with nobody out. And here's Larry Sheets. 12, that's tough. 52, Larry Sheets, tough 52. It's just out of range. 52 is a ground ball to third. And with that being a 12, that's going to be runner advance automatically on a 12. So Sheets grounds out. And the ground out went to third, so it's just going to be Romero throwing to first base. His only play, Ripken will take second base. So he's at second with one out for Mike Young. Clemens, three, is in play, 10. In play, 10 is a base hit. Now, there are not two outs, so you don't get that two-out boost that he would have gotten by being a sixth base runner. So Ripken will have to see if he can score himself. And the way I'm doing that on the charts is there is a runner advancement chart right here, runner advancement. And we take the lead die of the D6s, which in this case is a one. And it says runner on second base, lead die of one. It's a one base advancement. So Ripken can only go to third. He cannot score. So Ripken has to stop at third. Runners at the corners with one out for second baseman Juan Bonilla. Bonilla stepping up. Clemens needs a strikeout. He won't, he, he, he's missing all these tough results. Six is patient. 82. 82 is going to be a ground ball to short. They might be able to get the double play because that's a six. His double play rating is a 10. Clemens is a six, so they do turn the double play and get out of the inning. That's going to be a 6-4-3 double play. And that erases the run chance for the Orioles as they hit into the twin killing. We go to the bottom of the second. It is still 1-0. Favor the Red Sox. And if you like this setup, let me know if you'd rather have me do like I normally do and leave all the accoutrements behind and just roll off the score sheet. Let me know that too. I like trying different things. And so um, if I find something that works, I want to use it. If I find something that people find irritating and I want to get rid of it so just let me know or if you if it's indifference that's fine too um, I like doing things differently but you know like I said it's manic Monday so that's, this is the this is the day to do these things not on my inside pitch uh, nationals replay I'm not gonna do that but on this kind of a thing where it's manic money it's any, manic Monday it's anything goes so here you go all right so Dewey Evans is gonna lead off against Ken Dixon that's an eight which is tough 51 and that's a strikeout. Last number in the strikeout, Evans is out of there, one away. So Dixon, who has less tough results on his card, is finding more tough results than Clemens is for some reason, just the way the dice are falling. Here's Tony Armas, the center fielder. Dixon, seven, that's tough again. 77, that's definitely out of range. 77's a fly to center. So two quick outs, two up and two down, with nobody on for Rich Gedman, the catcher. And again, another situation where, well, this in this case, he had 118 baskets left. He's so inside pitch would, would rate him both ways. But uh, good thing because he's uh, he hits 100 points higher against righties. Dixon, six is tough, 26, and he struck him out. So Ken Dixon, a nice, nice bottom of the second. And at the end of two complete, still one nothing Red Sox. Clemens back out. We'll be facing the number nine hitter, Rick Dempsey. He'll be followed by O'Malley and Beniquez here in the top of the third. Clemens would like to get some of those tough results, get some strikeouts. Four, that's ballpark, so he still can't find a tough result. Ballpark 43, and again, for a right hand hitter, that's in the wheelhouse. So we're in the wheelhouse for Rick Dempsey, one to 41, and he will go yard. That's a 26. It's gone. Rick Dempsey, home run. How do you like that? We got a tie game just that quick. Rick Dempsey with the home run has tied the game. 
at one apiece. We are all tied up. And O'Malley steps in. Brand new ball game. O'Malley was flying to right his first trip. Clemens, seven. Finally get a tough result. 51. Tough 51 is going to be a ground ball to first. And Buckner will take it to the bag himself. One away. And that sends up Juan Beniquez. Beniquez was hit by a pitch his first time up. That's a nine, which is tough. 61. That's out of range. That's a fly to right field, and Dewey Evans will put it away. Two down for Jim Dwyer, or as Chris Berman called him, Jim Washer and Dwyer. And yes, I grew up very much influenced by Chris Berman highlights and those punny nicknames. Maybe it's where I got my puns from. I don't know. Bad influence, I suppose. Eight is tough. 65. Tough 65 is a ground ball to short. And Quinones over to Buckner to end the inning. So that's going to do it for the Orioles. They do get the run on the home on the home run by Dempsey. Go to the bottom of the third, tied at one. And Ken Dixon on the mound, and he'll be facing number nine hitter Ray Quinones. Quinones would later be traded to Seattle along with Mike Trujillo, and I think someone else. Uh, I think it was another pitcher. Another starting pitcher uh, for Dave Henderson and Spike Owen. That was the big trade the Sox made uh, in August before the deadline, and that helped them go on to their ALCS and their World Series appearances. All right, here's Quinones against Dixon. 11 is wheelhouse. Right out the bat, his wheelhouse is a 1-17 to for a home run. That's a 27. So that's a triple for Ray Quinones. How do you like that? Uh, Ray Quinones with a leadoff triple. And now the Orioles, you wonder, are they going to play the infield in? I think with nobody out, they play back and try to avoid the big inning. So here's Marty Barrett. Dixon 7 is tough. 13 struck him out. That's the last number in the tough result. So he struck him out. And now with one out and Romero coming up, they're going to bring the infield in. And on... The charts for payoff pitch, there is a chart here for infield in results. So right here, infield in, infield in, play at home. So that's what I would be using if and when that situation comes up. But right now it's Ed Romero. Romero singled and scored his first time up. That's a leaner, so I'm going to re-roll that. That's a three. That's tough. 20. Tough 20. Base hit for Romero right there. Infield in or not, that's a base hit for Romero. And the Red Sox take a 2-1 to one lead. Ed Romero, 2-2 two for two in place of Boggs. So he's doing the job. And the Sox lead it 2-1. to one. That'll bring up Billy Buck, Bill Buckner. One out, Romero on. And let's see, Romero... Only had two steals, so I'm not going to worry about stealing. Eight is tough, 69. Tough 69. That's a ground ball to short by Buckner. His double play range an eight. He's a six. That's an eight, so it's not going to. Um, he's not going to get the double play. In fact, Romero runs at a ten, which beats that eight. So Romero is actually going to take second base, and that'll be a 69 was a ground ball to short. It'll be a 6-3 ground up with Ripken's only play going to Murray at first. So two down. Runner at second. Sox lead at 2-1 here in the bottom of the third. Jim Rice the batter. Rice had an RBI single his first time up. Drive it in Romero. Dixon 4 is patient. 98 though. It's going to be a fly to left and that's going to end the inning. But the Sox reclaim the lead. Triple by Quinones, single by Romero. At the end of three, it is Boston 2 and Baltimore 1. We start the fourth, and it'll be Eddie Murray, Cal Ripken, and Larry Sheets for Earl Weaver's Orioles. Here in the top of the fourth here at Fenway, Clemens. Six is patient, so he still can't find that tough result. Patient 10 is going to be a leadoff walk to Eddie Murray. 
So Clemens got to feel like he's feeling a little bit snake bit here. Can't get these tough results when he's loaded with tough results on his card. Brings up Cal Ripken. Ripken is a good double play man if they can get a ground ball out of him. Three is in play, 68. That's out of range. 68 is a ground ball to second, so there you go. Double plays a seven, double plays a six. That's a three. That'll be an easy, easy peasy. Six, uh, four, six, three, double play. So Barrett to Quinones to Buckner, and that cleans the slate. Two down, base is clear for the designated hitter, Larry Sheets. Nine is tough 50. Tough 50 is just out of range. 50 will end up being a ground ball to Buckner to end the inning. So nothing doing there for the Orioles here in the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still two to one Red Sox. And Don Baylor, the designated hitter, will lead things off for Boston. Glide to center his first time up. Dixon trying to stay away from that wheelhouse. Seven is tough. He did it. 50. But tough 50. Don Baylor's a good hitter. He gets the base hit. Don Baylor fights that one off for a good, nice base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Baylor. And that'll bring up Dewey Evans. Evans struck out his first chance. Dixon would like a double play as well if he can get one. That's a nine, which is patient. 47. And that'll be a walk. So Two on, nobody out. All of a sudden, the Red Sox have something cooking here in the bottom of the fourth. And that brings up the center fielder, Tony Armas. Orioles still looking to try to turn two here. Dixon, five is in play, 42. That's out of range. 42 is a pop-up to first, infield fly rule. And Murray puts it away, one down. So Armas is out of there. Brings up Rich Gedman, the catcher. He's definitely a, a double play candidate with that eight there. So good chance for a possible double play if they can get a ground ball. Dixon 10 is, wheel, is ballpark, rather. 42, that's in the wheelhouse. No, I'm sorry, he's a left-handed batter. 42 is in play. 42 is in play. So in play on Gedman. He needs a 34 or less to get a hit. That's a 93, so that's not going to happen. It's a fly to right. And that's out number two. So Gedman is out of there, and Baylor does not run well, so he's not even going to think about going to third. So there's two down for Ray Quinones, who had that big triple. Can he do it again? Six is tough. Tough 81. That's going to be a fly to center to end the inning. And Dixon pitches out of that mess. So the Sox come up empty, despite a couple of hits, or hitting a walk, rather. And we go to the fifth, still two to one. Favor of the Red Sox. Roger Clemens back out. He can go eight innings before he gets tired. Dixon can only go six, so keep an eye on him the next couple of innings. Mike Young to lead it off. Singled his first chance and then erased on a double play. Clemens, five tough. Finally found a tough result, 56, and he struck him out. So Mike Young out on strikes. For Clemens, that is only strikeout number two because he just hasn't found those tough results like he had hoped. Here's Juan Bonilla. Bonilla head and hit into the said double play his first time up. Nine is tough, 59. That's not going to be a strikeout, but it will be a fly to right as Dewey Evans puts it away. Two down. And that takes us to the number nine hitter, Rick Dempsey. He homered for the only run of the game for the Orioles his first time up. He found the long ball going off the wheelhouse of the ballpark result. Clemens, six. This time is patient. 79 just out of range. 78 would have been a hit by pitch. 79, however, just a fly to center. Armas puts it away. It's a one, two, three inning for Clemens. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still two to one. Nip and tuck here at Fenway. And Marty Barrett, top of the order for the Sox. He's 0 for 2. He has grounded to third and struck out. That is a 5, which is in play, 63. And that's going to be a ground ball to second, Juan Bonilla. Over to Murray, one down. So, so far, Dixon's kind of holding his own against uh, 
against Roger Clemens. Here's Ed Romero. He's two for two in, in place of Wade Boggs. Two singles and a run scored. Dixon, eight is tough. Not this time. 78 is going to be a fly to center. And that'll be put away out there by Beniquez. So two up and two down, and that brings up Billy Buck. He is grounded out twice, once to Dixon and once to Ripken. 11, that's wheelhouse. 06, it is gone. Buckner, not no ground ball this time. That is a home run for Buckner on the wheelhouse 06. That's a home run for Bill Buckner. And the Red Sox lead it 3-1. Three 3-1 to one. Three to one is Dixon bitten by the gopher ball. Whoops, wrong guy, wrong stack. Jim Rice with two outs and the base is clear. He singled and flew to left. Dixon's got to avoid that 11, which he does this time. Tough, tough 73 is going to be a ground ball to second. And he had to rip to uh, Murray, and that ends the inning. But the home run off the bat of Bill Buckner, and the Red Sox lead it 3-1 to one as we go to the sixth. Roger Clemens, the batter, or the pitcher, rather. He's the batter. we got a scoop. Here's Tom O'Malley. He's 0 for 2. He flew to right and grounded to Buckner at first. Clemens, 8, tough. 65, out of range. 65 is a fly to left. And Rice will put it away. One down for Juan Beniquez, center fielder. He is was hit by the pitch, and he's flown to right. Five is tough. Double zero. We got a rare play finally. So we go to the payoff pitch. Rare play, base is empty chart, a 2D6 roll. Let's see what we get. We get an eight, and an eight says rain delay, roll 1D10. If zero to two, game is rained out. If three to five, lengthy delay, replace current pitcher, six to nine, no effect. So that's a 1D10 roll. And we get a six. Six says no effect. So no effect on the game. We're going to keep playing, and Beniquez is still at bat. So the rain didn't come. It's cloudy out there, but the storm front, the low-pressure system, whatever you want to call it, is on the outskirts of Fenway, and they're able to continue. Clemens, nine, tough, 33. Tough 33 struck him out. Two down. Beniquez out of there. So two down, base is clear for the right fielder, Jim Dwyer. He's 0 for 2. He's grounded to second and grounded to short. Clemens kind of in a groove now. Six is patient. Oh, wait, he will walk Mr. Dwyer. So he's still having a hard time finding those tough results, is Mr. Clemens. That brings up Murray. He is the tying run at the plate. So he's certainly capable of tying the game in one swing. Clemens fours ballpark, and that's an 0-2. That's a wheelhouse. So we got a wheelhouse check for Murray, 1 to 33, and we got a tie game. Anything up to a 70, he gets a hit. That's a 73, just out of range. 73 is going to be a ground ball to short. And that's going to do it. As Quinones will just throw to first. Won't even worry about the force play. He'll just throw to first and end the inning. So almost, almost a chance at a two-run homer. Well, it was a chance at a two-run homer, but it almost was a two-run homer. But almost doesn't count in this game. Only horseshoes and hand grenades, as they say. All right, so Don Baylor. DH will lead things off. He's, 0 for, he's 1 for 2. Flew to center in the first and singled in the fourth. Against Ken Dixon. 8 is tough. 20, that's a strikeout. And there's one away. Brings up Dewey Evans. Dewey Evans. Oh, that, that's a sewer dice. That one die didn't go through. Try it again. 3 is tough. 36. And that's a strikeout, so Dewey Evans out on strikes. And it seems like Dixon's hitting the tough result more than Clemens is, which is very, very strange. Brings up Tony Armas. And, whoops, can't hardly see Tony Armas that way, can you? Tony Armas flew to center and popped to first. Seven is tough, 98. That's a fly to left field to end the inning. Three up and three down. And we completed six innings. Here at Fenway with the score still Boston 3 and Baltimore 1. And 
I got to get my stacks together. I accidentally started mixing Boston and Baltimore players together. Don't want to do that. That's not a good thing to do. Getting anything out of order here. So I need to get them in the right sequence. Okay, now we got it straight. Now we are straight. All right, top of the seventh, Roger Clemens back out. He'll be facing Cal Ripken. He's walked and grounded into a double play. Three to one Sox here in the top of the seventh. That's a nine, tough 14, struck him out. Ripken out of there, one away. Brings up Larry Sheets, the designated hitter. And Sheets grounded out twice. Eight is tough, and an 08, another strikeout. So Clemens finally starting to get those tough results and starting to get some strikeouts. That's two away for left fielder Mike Young. He's one for two. Singled in the second, struck out in the fifth. Nine is tough again, 80. And that's out of range. That's going to be a fly to center. And it's a one, two, three inning for Clemens here in the seventh. We go to the seventh inning stretch here at Fenway. With the score, Boston 3 and Baltimore 1. And let's see what we're going to have here. Ken Dixon's going to come back out. Let me check the fatigue rules just to make sure I'm straight on this. Because, like I said, I haven't played this game in a while. So I want to check pitcher fatigue once you get past the inning of what's on his number. Uh, let's see here. If he has not allowed three or more runs, then he may continue to pitch with normal ratings until the end of the game. Well, he has allowed three runs, so he technically would be fatigued here. So we're going to take, we're going to pull Ken Dixon. He's going to come out, and they're going to bring in lefty reliever Brad Havens. So Brad Havens, the lefty, is on for the Orioles. Close the book on Dixon. He goes six innings, gives up three runs. And let's see how many hits. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. And looks like I see one walk. Of course, he gave up the long ball. And then we have how many strikeouts? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is what I have for Ken Dixon. Six innings pitch, six hits, three runs, all earned. One walk, five strikeouts, and the home run. And you can see I've scratched out Brad Havens because now he is in the ball game to face Rich Gedman. So now Gedman, who's a 282 hitter against righties, now turns to a 186 hitter against Brad Havens, the lefty. Havens to Gedman. Eight is tough, 64. And that's out of range. 64 is a fly to left. One away. That'll take us to Quinones. And that big triple in the first, or I'm sorry, in the third. Triple and scored the third and then flew out to center in the fourth. Havens 11 is patient. 24, that's a base on balls. So Quinones will reach on the one out walk. And that brings up Marty Barrett. And more bullpen activity for the Orioles as they do have right-hander Nate Snell loosening. Barrett, 9 is tough. 61 against the lefty, tough out of range. 61 to fly to right. And there's 2 away. And that takes us to Ed Romero. Havens to Romero. 10 is patient, 48 against a lefty, 48. That's going to be a double for Ed Romero. And maybe they went with Havens, one batter too many. And Jonas runs at a, ten, at a uh, 7, so he will score from first on the extra base hit since there are two outs. And that puts the Red Sox up 4-1. to one. Like I said, it may have gone one too many with Brad Havens. Now, they will leave Havens in to pitch to Buckner. But this will be his last batter. He doesn't get Buckner. He's coming out 
and Nate Snell is already ready to go. Havens to Buckner. Seven is in play. 93, though, is going to be a fly to right to end the inning. So Havens gives up the run in one inning of, of work. And at the end of seven, it's Boston four and Baltimore one. So Havens goes one inning, gives up a hit and a walk. Nothing else. And Nate Snell will come in and pitch. I'm sorry, it won't be Nate Snell because he's a long reliever. We're going to go to... Well, actually, so is Bordy. So, yeah, we're going to go to Nate Snell in the ninth. Certainly not going to Ossie, their closer. So, Nate Snell will be pitching in the ninth for the Orioles. He will be... I'm sorry, in the eighth for the Orioles. Bottom of the eighth, he'll be pitching. Roger Clemens, this is his fatigue inning, but since he's given up only one run, he can still keep going without any issues. And let's see, do the Orioles want to start using pinch hitters? They've got some lefties on the bench if they want to go there. They're actually going to, I think they're going to hit the bench here with one of their bench players. And it's going to be Alan Wiggins. Alan Wiggins is going to pinch hit for Bonilla, and he will stay in the game to play second base. So Wiggins takes over for Bonilla in a pinch hitting role here in the eighth. And then will stay there in second base in the bottom of the eighth. It's a C and a 2. Runs in an 8 and a 6B. All right, so Clemens to Alan Wiggins. 7 is tough. 26. Alan Wiggins tough. 26 is a base hit. So Alan Wiggins gets a pinch hit single. And let's look and see what Bonilla would have done in the same situation. 26, tough 26. He would have also gotten a base hit. So there, it was... Either one of them would have gotten a hit, as it turned out. So leadoff man is on, Alan Wiggins. Down 4-1, to one, you're not going to steal. So, and now they're going to pinch hit for Dempsey. Granted, he hit the home run his, last time, his first time up, but he is a 175 hitter against right-handed pitching. So the prudent move is to bring in a new uh, pinch hitter, and that will be Lee Lacey. So Lee Lacey will come in and pinch hit for Dempsey, and then Al Pardo will catch in the eighth inning. So Lee Lacey is on. Now the Red Sox bullpen starts to stir a little bit as they have Bob Stanley loosing. And they also have the lefty Sambito. They're both loosing down the bullpen. There's Lacey. Eight is tough. Tough 47 is a base hit for Lacey. So again, good thing they did that because I think, I'm pretty sure that Dempsey would have, 47, yeah, he would have uh, grounded to third possible double play. So in this case, it's a base hit for Lee Lacey. And Wiggins, an excellent base runner, runs at an eight. But there aren't two outs, so we have to go to the runner advancement portion. And the lead die is a three with a runner on first. The lead die of three only gets one base. So station to station kind of what's going on here for the Orioles. But the first two are on with nobody out for the third baseman, Tom O'Malley. Leadoff hitter, he is 0 for 3, is O'Malley. Clemens trying to fight through this. 11 is defense, so we got a defensive check. And let's pull out the defensive chart. The result is an 86. So the defensive result, if I can find the chart in front of me. Defense. Defense 86 is an error check on the shortstop, Quinones. Quinones, on his defensive rating, is an error rating of 1, which is the worst you can have. So if this is a 1 to 55, it'll be an error. 56 or higher, he will make the play. That's a 63, so he makes the play. Now let's see what kind of play it is. It's a ground ball to short. Double play rating of O'Malley is a, is a 7. Clemens is a 6. The original roll was an 11. So it'll be, let's see, with runners at first and second, I believe anything at 11 or 12 is runner advancement. 
So that'll be a ground out with the runner advancing. So the only play for Quinones is to throw it to first to get O'Malley. One down, runners do advance to second and third. And that'll bring up Juan Beniquez. Jim Dwyer is on deck. And you could see Joe Sambito coming in if Clemens struggles here. Infield is back. They'll give up the run to get the out. Clemens, nine, tough. 06, that's a strikeout. They may not have to now. Now they can go to normal depth because there's two outs. And Jim, they're going to let him pitch to Jim Dwyer now. Jim Dwyer. Will be on. Dwyer is 0 for 2. Grounded out twice and walked. Big spot here for Clemens. Try to get through this. That's a 5. Tough. 66. Out of range. 66 is a ground ball to short. Quinones to Buckner, and the inning is over. And Clemens pitches around that mess without giving up anything. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. And I think that's going to be all for Clemens. He will go his eight innings, and then they'll bring in Bob Stanley to try to close it in the ninth. And I'll do the totals for Clemens after, the inning, after this inning is over. Nate Snell will be the new pitcher for the Orioles. And he'll be facing Rice, Baylor, and Evans. Start the bottom of the eighth. Snell, 10, is in play, 79. That's going to be a fly to center. Hauled in by Beniquez, one away. Oh, and I forgot to mention that uh, since Dempsey was pinch hit for, the new catcher for the Orioles is Al Pardo. He is the new catcher. So I need to write him in as a defensive replacement. Almost forgot to do that. He's not very good. He's an F-rated catcher as far as range goes. Error three and an arm of three. So Pardo is the new catcher. And he will bat in that number nine spot. Of course, Wiggins stays in the game to play second base. All right, so Snell will now face Don Baylor. One out. And these PDF cards, I've had them in rubber bands, so that's probably why they're sticking up a little bit. Since they're PDFs, I'm not putting them in any sleeves. No need for that. Here's Baylor. There is one out. Baylor, three is wheelhouse. 45, that's gone. Don Baylor, a home run. Wheelhouse on Snell, 45, that's gone. And the Sox now lead it 5-1. to one. Home run, Don Baylor. And that takes the save situation out of the equation. So now Bob Stanley has sat down. And the, or the Red Sox will go to a different relief pitcher. Let's see who they're going to go to now with the, with, since it's not a save situation. I think they're going to go to Steve Crawford instead. So Crawford will be coming on, not Stanley, because it's no longer a save. And here's Dewey Evans. One out, five to one Red Sox. Snell, two is ballpark, 59. That's in the in play section for Dewey Evans. But it's a 21, that's a base hit. So Dwight Evans, base hit. Snell running into issues. That'll bring up Tony Armas. He could use a double play right about now. Six is tough, 40. Tough 40 strikeout. I guess he'll take that too. That's out number two. And it turns it over to Rich Gedman, the catcher. Rich Gedman. Five, and that is in play. 16. In play, 16 is a base hit. Evans runs at a five, so he does not get the automatic two base advancement for there being two outs because he's not a fast runner. Lead die is a two. So he's still going to get two bases according to the chart. Run on first, lead die of two, you get two bases. So that's going to put runners at the corners. With two down for the number nine hitter, Quinones. Orioles really don't want to have to go to their bullpen again, although Rich Bordy is loosening just in case. Really rather not use another reliever if they can get away with it. Four is in play, 40. In play 40 is out of range. They will get away with it. That's a ground ball back to the pitcher's 
Snell. Innings over. But the Sox do get the run. And we go to the ninth with the score. Boston 5 and Baltimore 1. And now Steve Crawford is the new pitcher. Let's do the totals on Clemens. So we can see what he did on the afternoon. He goes eight innings, gives up just the one run, which was the homer by Dempsey. Let's see, he walked three, and he hit a batter. He struck out one, two, three, four, five. Only struck out six. And he gave up, let's see how many hits. One, two, three, four. Four hits. Okay, so on the score sheet, we have for Clemens, eight innings pitched, four hits, a run, three walks, six strikeouts, and new pitcher now is Steve Crawford. You see I've scratched him off the list here. And on the Orioles side of the house, Snell and Havens have been used. Lacey, Wiggins, and Pardo have been used. So they still have Shelby and Paris on the bench if they need to. So starting the top of the ninth, it'll be Eddie Murray. So you're certainly not going to pinch it for Murray or Ripken or Sheets. So no pinch hitters for the Orioles in the near future in this inning. Steve Crawford, 40 games pitched, 3.92 ERA, 0-2 record, 3.92 ERA, and four saves on the 86th season. If he gets into trouble, Bob Stanley and Joe Sambito are ready, by, ready and standing by. Murray, three is ballpark, 28. That's in the wheelhouse for Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray's wheelhouse, 1-33, to it would be a home run. That's an 81, though, so it's not even going to be a hit. It's going to end up being a fly to center, so Murray just missed it. One down, but dangerous pitch for Crawford. Brings up Cal Ripken. Ripken on the day, walked, struck out, and grounded into a double play, 0 for, 0 for 2. Five is in play, 33, that's out of range. 33 is going to end up being a pop-up to the second baseman, Barrett. And there's two away, so Red Sox one out away from ending this one. Larry Sheets the batter, Sheets 0 for 3, two ground outs and a strikeout. Crawford 2 is wheelhouse, but that's a 98. And his hits go up to 95, but that's a 98. It's the kind of day it's been for the Orioles. It's a fly to right. Back on the track is Evans. He makes the catch, and the ball game is over. The Red Sox win it by the score of 5-1. to one As Roger Clemens gets the victory, and Ken Dixon takes the loss. Snell gives up one run in three hits in one inning, striking out one. So total hits, 10 for the Red Sox, 5, 10, and 0 for the Red Sox. And for the Orioles, they mustered four hits. One run, four hits, no errors. Let's check left on base. See who they had left on base. For the Orioles, one, two, three, four, five left on for the Orioles. And for the Red Sox, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left on. So there is your final line score from Fenway Park. The Red Sox defeat the Orioles. Five runs, ten hits, no errors, and seven left for Boston. One run, four hits, no errors, and five left for the Orioles. Winning pitcher, Roger Clemens. And the loser, Ken Dixon. No save because the 5-1 to lead was not a save situation. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit different presentation here on Manic Monday. Try to be a little different, see if, you know, mix things up a bit. Payoff pitch, we've had for Manic Monday so far, we've had History Maker Baseball, we've had uh, Stratomatic Basic. And now we're in the third week of Manic Monday since it's return. We're doing payoff pitch. Next Manic Monday, don't know. It might be replay baseball. It might be pine tar baseball. It might be uh, status pro baseball. Uh, so, or it might be APA. I mean, there's, there's my four choices right there. So we'll see what it is uh, when the time comes. I'll have to think about it and see what, what 
moves me at the time. So there's your final line score. And uh, Orioles just couldn't get anything off of Clemens for sure. And if you wanted to see the score sheet, the final score sheet, there it is. Um, 5, 10, and 0 for the Red Sox, 1, 4, and 0 for the Orioles. Winning pitcher was Clemens, losing pitcher was Dixon. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you're having a, an, an okay or at least a, a good Monday. Um, and hopefully your weekend was good as well. Getting close to spring. Spring training's in the air and it won't be long before opening day gets going. So until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And I will see you all down the road.